Europe and China's relationship in space has taken a turn for the worst over the past week, and let me explain why. Basically, Europe no longer wants to collaborate with China in one of the most emblematic enterprises of space exploration, space stations and crewed spaceflight in low Earth orbit. The turning point was on Monday the 23rd of January during the European Space Agency's annual press briefing in Paris, during which the Director General Joseph Aschbacher was questioned on collaboration with China on the Tiangong space station, to which he answered, quote unquote, for the moment, we have neither the budgetary nor the political green light or intention to engage in a second space station, that is, participating on the Chinese space station. This is a major disappointment for the supporters of stronger Sino-European ties in space, including myself, as the possibility of cooperation in crewed spaceflight was very real. Back in 2014, ESA Director Jean-Jacques Dordain had signed an agreement with China's manned space agency director Wang Zhaoyao to deepen cooperation in crewed spaceflight. Following this, in 2016, Chinese astronaut Ye Guangfu traveled to Sardinia, Italy for ESA's underground training course. And in 2017, ESA astronauts Samantha Cristoforetti and Matthias Marach joined 16 Chinese astronauts in the coastal city of Yantai in eastern China, again for joint training. In ESA's own words at the time, the ultimate goal was to establish a long-term cooperation with China and for ESA astronauts to fly on the Chinese space station. And now, if we fast forward to 2022, China's completed the assembly of its permanent Tiangong space station, which we've discussed many times on this channel. And in the same year in March, the chief designer of China's crewed spaceflight program, Zhou Jianping, said he looked forward to welcoming foreign astronauts on the space station. And this was later confirmed by CMSA spokesperson Ji Qiming two months ago, saying that China had received requests from several foreign countries to participate in the CSS and that the relevant preparations for the training of these foreign astronauts were being carried out. Unfortunately, it's now clear that these won't be ESA astronauts, based on ESA Director General Joseph Aschbacher's statements last week. I think there are several reasons to this. Aschbacher says that it's too costly for ESA to engage with two different space stations simultaneously, the ISS and Tiangong. And while there may be some truth to this, it seems odd if this is the only reason, because after all, the European Space Agency's three-year budget was increased to a record 16.9 billion euros in 2022. So it sounds more like a prioritization choice that was made that was detrimental to the collaboration on Tiangong. And in parallel, there have been some seemingly well-informed discussions on Twitter that have suggested that the US may have pressured ESA through its member states to renounce space station collaboration with China. And I want to stress that there is no proof for this at the moment, but I don't think it's too hard to believe, considering the deteriorating geopolitical environment and just the US's historical hostility with any collaboration with China when it comes to space. Now, this doesn't mean the end of Europe-China cooperation in space, quite the contrary. I mean, ESA and several member states have many healthy ongoing scientific missions with China, among which you have the Sino-French Oceanic Satellite, CFOSAT, the Sino-Italian Ionosphere Monitoring Mission, CSCS, and in the future, there'll be European payloads on the lunar mission Chang'e 6, science payloads on the Chinese space station, there's the SVOM X-ray Space Telescope to be launched this year, and the Smile Solar Magnetosphere mission in 2025, just to name a few. So again, by all means, I think the collaboration remains healthy. It's just that for a crewed spaceflight, one of the most emblematic parts of space exploration, Europe will be focusing on the ISS and commercial space stations in the future, while China will be working with a different set of nations. This will very likely be Middle Eastern and African countries. I'm thinking, for example, of the UAE, which has shown a very strong will to develop a domestic space program. They successfully launched the Hope Probe to Mars in 2020. They signed the Artemis Accords, and they also signed an agreement last year with China to deploy the Rashi-2 rover on the moon as a piggyback payload of China's Chang'e 7 mission in 2026. And one final example that's really hot news at the moment is the very small country of Djibouti, who signed an MOU last week with China's HKTG Group to build a spaceport with an eyebrow-raising number of seven launch pads. So let's just hope that collaboration in space is here to stay, as space has always played a special and symbolic role in connecting nations in the past, even those that have been at odds with each other. That is, of course, my personal opinion. And finally, I just want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters who support me at patreon.com slash Thank you so much for making this video possible, and I'll see you in the next episode.